Hey folks, John Kelly. Welcome back to the Law Enforcement Life Coach Sometimes Heroes Need Help podcast. This podcast is being brought to you by On Target Claims, where their motto is on target from setback to settlement. Now listen, a little background. I've worked with these guys on the job, on the street for over 25 years, man, and they have always done the right thing and have always had my back. Now, in this second chapter, let them have your back, right? You wouldn't go to court without an attorney. Why would you go up against an insurance company without representation, right? They represent you, the policyholder, when it, you go up against an insurance company submitting a claim. And I can tell you this, right? From beginning to end, they're going to be with you during the entire process. They're going to properly document that claim with the latest technology. And then when it comes time to getting things fixed, They've got a complete stable of vendors that are certified that are going to get it done right the first time. They also offer a pre-loss planning and policy review. So you know exactly what you're covered for, right? Make sure that you're adequately covered. The time to find out that you're not isn't after that horrific event, okay? So give my friends a call at On Target Claims, 561-208-1775. Or go to their website, ontargetclaims.com. They cover the entire state of Florida, offices in Fort Lauderdale and Tampa, and tell them John sent you. And now, let's get to the episode. Yeah, we'll get started. Hey, folks, John Kelly. Welcome back to the Law Enforcement Life Coach Sometimes Heroes Need Help podcast. Sitting down with Beth Samo. She is coming to us from St. Louis and she is a licensed, right? Counselor, mental, all things, mental health, man. And listen, you're a fucked up bunch. So this is the person we need to be talking to, right? She is, um, she is dedicated her life trying to be that resource for, for you, right? So you can keep that slide from becoming an avalanche. And, um, we're going to talk all things mental health, all things behavioral health, relationships, and, and her initiative with uh, Thin Line Counseling, uh, help for the helpers. And listen, I'm going to, I could go on and on and on about Beth. So I'm going to shut up. Beth, it's so nice to see you. Hello, John. Thank you so much for having me on today. Uh, no, listen, it's my pleasure. We first connected, I think I was in Nevada. Yes, like, you are. I was in this like gold mining town in, in Eureka, Nevada. And we were like, oh, what's, what's going on? And uh, that was the first time we kind of connected. And I was just like, you know what? You've got so much. Capacity to help. I'm like, well, we, we got to have you on the show. We got to let people know about you and what you're doing. And because I think. not once one size doesn't fit all in your in your in your profession and it's it's so Absolutely. many times i hear from people that either start therapy or are introduced to it counseling they walk quickly away from it because there isn't a good fit and right and and like so i you're super easy to talk to and you are you. You know, the, that buzzword culturally competent like i i think you get it man i think you get it and I think it's important mm -hmm. that you have a platform to reach the people in need, whether they be our military, our first responders. Um, but before we get into all the great things you're doing, just a little, like a little history on you, kid, if that sounds cool. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So born and raised in the St. Louis metro area um, and moved to the great state of Arkansas for grad school, Woo Pig Suey. I yeah, I've never been. I don't. It doesn't sound like I'm it's missing beautiful. a lot in Arkansas. No, yeah, no? definitely yeah. different culture. But All right, that's a nice way from of what saying, I'm used to from saying it's yeah. a nice place to visit. But I don't want to live there. Okay, cool. I lived there for five years. Oh, but but you had to. Yeah. Well, doing... no, I stayed two years after. Oh, it's so. nice. Okay, so we'll have to maybe put it on the rotation. We'll have to check it out. Yeah, if you like outdoor stuff, go there. But yeah, All so right. I moved there for grad school got my heart broken, moved back to the St. Louis area, moved to Illinois, decided Illinois was not for me, came back to St. Louis. Here we are. All right. Nice. And so 
your 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 back like what why become a mental health counselor why why yeah become, why i mean there's you're extremely intelligent young lady well i mean why that i appreciate that yeah so we, you started this by saying you know we're a fucked up bunch and yeah i thought you were referring to therapists at oh first. no i mean i guess you could i was i was i would never <laughs> cast that that net but that's accurate you. one yeah, of my first you know days funny yeah <laughs> go ahead go ahead you know you're right no i you know what you know what i think the funny thing is is that to a greater or lesser extent, like I, and, and I did not, I, I was speaking of the first responder community, but to a mm -hmm. greater or lesser extent, it's really not about the first responder community. It's just about people, man. It's just about yeah. life. Everybody's got shit. Right? Like everybody, Absolutely. there's nobody, there's nobody that's immune from life and life happening. And so, um, with that being said, like, why, 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 why get involved and in, in become a, a and spend a, a, a ridiculous amount of time in school to mm -hmm. be licensed and, and really have your finger on the pulse? Like, why do that? Yeah. So it's funny. One of the first days in grad school, one of my, I think it was my academic advisor. He goes, you know, what makes you so fucked up that you're here? Ah, like in this program to become a psychotherapist, right? Yeah. Right. So I actually wasn't sure I would get into school because I have a long history of trauma and I have struggled with depression, anxiety myself, and I have PTSD myself. Hmm. Um, I manage it really well. Cool. Um, but I do have the diagnosis and it's like, oh, they're not going to take me, but I got to try because I got so much out of I got so much benefit of getting help so that I wanted a, to you share a, you that. You got a front row seat for this. Yeah. Yeah. And it turns out that's actually a really good quality for someone to become a therapist, provided you can manage your own stuff and have right. the capacity to teach others or help others. That makes perfect sense. That mm -hmm. makes you you were the you you were the, the beneficiary of of counseling by somebody and it it helped you navigate and you're like i'd like to be able to do that for somebody else absolutely i wanted to pay it forward I, i've always just been kind of a compassionate person my father um was very ill growing up uh my mom got pregnant with me three weeks after he got a brain cancer diagnosis yikes but he survived through yeah. the, you know, modern medicine radiation okay. back in 1983 was in its infancy for brain yeah. cancer, but it worked and it saved his life that in chemo. Oh, um, so cool. I got my dad for 26 years. Oh, um, wow. That's awesome. Yeah. But he was disabled, you know, that whole time. Right. Um, man had, you know, master's degree in folk rehab counseling and he couldn't, you know, after some time he couldn't do that job anymore mm. Then was working at Walgreens and then was on disability and then passed when I was 26. And he was my hero. He was my person. We were best friends. Um, and it was after he passed, he had been in hospice and the hospice social worker uh, offered me some free sessions hmm. and I took her up on it. And it was very cathartic for me. I was like, you know what? I, I need to do this. That from, from a grief standpoint to help you with that, W mm -hmm. is it... but I, I had issues growing up from the time I was like 12 like basically mm. around puberty I started having a lot of mental uh, behavioral emotional kind of issues OCD you know I couldn't control what's happening to my dad right so of you know my hero so I would you know kind of control try to control my environment mm. wow and so that's that's quite a statement that the people you know, it's like it's like you hear the story about the you know the person that had the interaction with the cop and then then they you know when they were little and they helped them out and then they were like oh, i want to i want to have that impact on somebody else so yeah. you, you you're all in there's no like you 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 oh, see yeah. the value of this and you're like i'm paying this forward and this is the way i'm going to do it and I do not do it for the money. Trust me on that. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it ain't there, but no, but it's it, you know, and that's the thing, right? It's that um, having passion for something. It's um, you know, that's your why. 
that's your why yeah. and and having a why you know that will provide moving forward it's just because people see the genuineness and, and that you care about what it is that you're doing um if you were in it for the money you'd be shit nobody would you you wouldn't be good at it you just or it'd be a psychiatrist <laughs> oh that's no, a shot oh no, shot across some, the brow um, to our psych there's psychiatrist amazing, there's amazing psychiatrists out there um truly true i they you know what what they have on me is they understand chemistry and i do not so, so. they they because they can um they can prescribe medicine can they not yeah that that's their medical the only... doctors or do's yeah i got you okay um yeah so speaking to what you're doing now right uh thin line counseling I, services I, you you got to put the services part in there. services it, it's part of the name <laughs> it's part of the name um you know i started looking at some things and it got me thinking um you know everybody i'm going to make a statement it's going to be kind of a question i want you to see if i'm on the right path here mm -hmm. i think and i've probably read somewhere i can't quote it but i've read i think a lot of the symptoms of depression and anxiety mimic PTS. Yeah, yeah. So um, actually, w diagnoses, when we diagnose, it's for insurance companies, first and foremost, like we have to put people in these boxes so mm. that insurance will mm. reimburse, right? Gotcha. Uh, and we'll cover the service. Um, but Diagnosis can also be helpful because it's a common language across the world, just like math, you know, one plus one equals two, no matter what country you're in, mm -hmm. what the DSM, which is the diagnostic statistical manual, you know, uh, of mental disorders. Like if you say depression, you say anxiety, someone in China who's a, a clinician is going to know what that means the same as I do pretty much. Right. So, um, PTSD there's a lot of crossover with a lot of different diagnoses, if that makes sense. Yeah. I was just wondering, is there, because there's this I don't know, awareness, I'll say awareness, right. But it seems to be like, I don't want to be, I don't want to minimize it or, or, or say something that sounds disparaging. But like, mm -hmm. like PTSD, it's like the latest and greatest thing now. Like everybody's got it. No, because, no, no. That's because, not, narcissism is the new thing. <laughs> but yes. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Um, because there's also money's attached to that diagnosis. Yeah. And, and so, so part of me goes, wait a minute. Like everything starts off pure, right? Everything yeah. starts off pure. And then as soon as we, human beings get our little sticky dirty hands involved in stuff then it, it corrupts yeah. and so uh, there's a question in here somewhere um <laughs> is is because there's so much crossover how how are there pressures to categorize things as ptsd versus depression or anxiety like if i'm a first responder mm -hmm. and i have i'm depressed yeah being i don't this is a question because i don't know but yeah. being depressed um is a can be a common thing people can be depressed mm -hmm. you, you're not how much of a leap is it to draw a, a ptsd ptsi type diagnosis from somebody that comes to you i mean do, do you see what am i am i asking it the right way like i i just I, um, I, is 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 there i'm not a conspiracy theorist but i i, mm -hmm. I is there like everybody in the world's got ptsd right so yeah. i'm going what the fuck is going on listen listen hey yeah. hello you know um McFly. we've been saying <laughs> we've been seeing the same shit for fucking 30 years man and yeah. um are we are, 
and I again, I don't want to sound like a heartless prick, but are we overinflating the diagnosis yes. when it's just people that fucking had a, you know, they're going through a tough patch? Like, yes. yeah, they're going through a tough patch. And so, but I, I don't know. Am I, am I, am I warm? Yes, or you, am I... you make sense. Yeah. Okay. So, so, all right. So, humans, we work by patterns, our brains right yeah. we want to find we want to find similarities we want puzzle pieces to fit together neatly we want to have a reason for something um you know when someone dies we want someone to blame for that person's death or some thing um so when someone's having a hard time as humans we want to like you said categorize that we want to put it in a box somehow mm -hmm. um, because it helps kind of demystify you know, allegedly will help kind of demystify things. Um, yes, PTSD is overdiagnosed, 100%. Well, not 100, but quite a bit. It is. It is overdiagnosed. Right. Because, now, this is my follow-up to that. It seems like, right, that there are some big, you know, entities, you know, multi-million dollar organizations that seem to benefit mm -hmm. the more of us are jacked up and sideways technically mm -hmm. uh you know federal grants funding corporate sponsorship i just it's just it's just like beyond me i've i've met people beth and the first words out of their mouth is their diagnosis yeah hi i'm john kelly i'm uh, a ptsd survivor uh i got fucking uh hit on the head with a brick when i was three I, you know, I used to eat crayons, uh, you know, and you just go, well, fuck, man. Um, well, Were you a Marine? Well, well, well yes. Are you, you a know, Marine? Or, yes. You know, these are the issues, right? And you just go, <laughs> holy smokes, man. Um, I think we're, and again, I, I, it's a statement question. Where I, I think we're, oh, fuck, I know there's going to be some pushback on this. We're almost making it like a cool club to be in. Like somehow you get the fucking yeah. patch. Like and, I don't want to be in that club. No, no. And and trust me, you do not. No, uh, I know. People, people who truly, truly meet criteria, it is, it can be very disabling. Um, and I know people that, that are like, yeah. that check the box that are fucking hurting and struggling. But it, it it there's a there's an element out there that you know hey oh I saw I saw a dead baby oh I got PTSD well well stop not fuck. necessarily you know, oh we yeah. had you know uh you, you know and just so it just seems like that that the, the the carefree nature if you will of the diagnosis undermines the real need for those that are out there that are truly suffering. Yeah. And and struggling, I guess that's where I wanted to go with this initially. It's just that mm -hmm. it's a problem. It, it's a problem. I don't know that it's as widespread as everyone wants to make it out to be because there are what that PTS isn't. As yeah, widespread. I think I think yeah. there's I think there's some bad actors. I think there's some self serving actors, oh. and and that at the end of the day, like I've gone to conferences, Beth. And the first words out of a therapist's mouth was trying to convince the room how messed up they are because of all mm -hmm. the things they've seen. No, you know, it's, like, it's a normal human reaction to an abnormal situation. Right. But but the, but the, they're feeding you over like Yeah, uh, oh I know. A, a good friend of mine says it's okay to be okay. I go, I love it. It's okay to mm -hmm. be okay. Like just because I see and do things that 95% of the population doesn't do doesn't mean it has to carve a rut in my soul. I can, mm -hmm. I can find healthy ways, i.e. Yes. speak to a therapist, a uh, counselor, do some activity, get educated to help mitigate the impact of seeing and doing things that aren't that great. Like I can do that. Absolutely. Like that's what we should lead with. Not you are, you have seen so many critical incidents. The average person sees two, you see, you know, and then it's this, it's almost like if I tell you enough how messed up you are, 
it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Then you go, sure. you know what? I well, I guess I should be messed up after everything that I've seen. And then and I, and I feel like I'm not messed up. So maybe I'm messed up. Am I in I denial? Don't feel messed up. Right, uh, yeah, like, yeah. You know, it, you yeah. know it, it's just it's it's just I think it it muddies the water in a situation where we everybody needs clarity. Okay, so this is this is where it becomes a problem when everybody is a Google or TikTok or YouTube expert. Mm, okay. So I think a lot of what we're seeing in, in earlier, we were talking about buzzwords. Narcissism is the new buzzword. It's bullshit. I'm tired of hearing it. Toxic masculinity, all this crap. Um, Stop I'm, with I the am, buzzwords. I am, I am toxic masculinity. Yeah, whatever. I, I you am. wouldn't be talking to me if you were. I um, am. I am. <laughs> it's a good thing. All, all this social media, like bullshit that's come up. Unless you're a licensed professional, that, no, just no. Like, I don't know how to shoot a gun better than a law enforcement, somebody in law enforcement like you. I know how to shoot guns. I learned how to shoot guns from an ATF agent. Right. I do not know how to shoot a gun as well as you do. So why is someone who's an accountant who has a TikTok account going to tell people better than a psychotherapist what mm. PTS is, what the criteria are, how it presents, how it manifests, and how to treat it. Like that with anything, right? You got to go to the source. You got to go to the people that know. Right. Got to go to the people that know. Um, all right. So I, I guess what I'm trying to paint a, a better picture of maybe a more accurate landscape is that, uh, you know, w there's, we have a long way to go, right? Yeah, we have a long way to go, but um, we still have control here. There's nobody, nobody's surrendering here, right? We, uh, I, I hate the. Prof I feel it at times. I got to defend the profession because mm -hmm. if you listen to some folk talk, who in the world would want to do this job? Oh, this yeah. is what's going to happen to you. You're go hey, how about you're going to thrive? How about if you make good decisions? and you make self-care mm -hmm. a priority, you actually thrive. You've got an amazing profession and framework to be a, a, a living superhero. Mm -hmm. and, 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 if you, and if with proper guidance and direction, you can thrive in all areas of your life. I, yeah. have, I don't hear that spiel. I don't hear that pitch out there. So you, you're talking for, um, for a framework that I, it's like a theoretical framework um psychobabble kind of stuff but i call reality choice <clears throat> the reality is if you think of life as a card dealer it deals you these cards you get the cards you look at the cards you get to choose what you do with them hmm. you get to strategize with them in different ways now some cards like i said life just deals it to you i am a white female i can't get around that right like there's not really anything i can do about that um you know, maybe you have juvenile diabetes, type one diabetes. You didn't do anything to bring that on yourself, but you have it. Yeah. So how are you going to choose to manage it? Are you going to take your insulin? You know, if we're running with that analogy, are you going to take your insulin? Are you going to keep a healthy lifestyle mm. or are you going to let yourself get ketoacidosis? Mm. So it is choices. to a certain extent about choice. Well, choices. About how we live our lives right right um not completely then, but a, a lion's share of mental health getting through mental health challenges is the choices you make exactly and 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 i don't want to be so ignorant as to say that it's only about your choices right it's multifaceted yeah, life's multifaceted yeah. a lot of things yeah. get thrown at you but embracing the fact that more often than not you have a you have a say and you have a decision on how things turn out i think is a nice foundational way to start yeah 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 absolutely it's people have a lot more power than they know in their own more locus of control in their own life more talk power to me about that they even know. yeah talk to me about that beth yeah what do you want to know well i mean <laughs> You know, I, you know, you get browbeaten about over the head about what you what you don't have. You know, mm -hmm. these are the thing, all the negativity. Um, what's how, what, what's the importance of like framing when you sit down with somebody um, who's coming to you with you know just 
who's uh, not thriving, who's mm-hmm. who's suffering. I know there's a whole process that you undertake to find out, you know, what what's going on and and what steps need to be taken. But sure, the role of like framing, reframing in what you do. Mm-hmm. That's cognitive behavioral therapy. Yeah, talk and that, to me. That's give me give me give me, give me the Reader's yeah. Digest version of that because I think that that's Ooh. very important, right? It is, but you're talking to an Italian and we can talk. So you want the Reader's Digest version? I don't know if I can give it to you, but, but let's try it. All right. Um, so cognitive behavioral therapy is what most therapists are trained on. It's what insurance reimburses. It's what most of us use. It's evidence based because it works. Um. It, and what it essentially says, cognitive, cognitive meaning thinking, yeah. behavior meaning your behavior, and therapy sure. meaning therapy. So what it essentially is saying is how you think and what you think frames and informs what you feel. Then you have choice. So let's say I, you know, I feel like shit about something. Well, now that I'm in a pissy mood for whatever reason. Um, I may choose to do something really negative or destructive, or I can reframe how I'm thinking about whatever the situation is, find that silver lining, make it a little more positive, and then I'm going to feel differently as a result of what I'm thinking, and I might be more clear-headed to make different choices. That's a very simplistic. Yeah, I know, but it makes sense. It makes sense, but some things just suck and there is no silver lining. And we have to acknowledge that too, that sometimes, you know, like, so I was watching a documentary about the Oklahoma City bombing yesterday, Mm -hmm. you know, like the children who were killed there. Um, There's no silver lining to that, that I can think of, right? Sometimes things just suck. Sometimes things are just just terrible. terrible. Yeah. Yeah. And and so at that point, what you do as a therapist, friend, supportive human being. Yeah. How about that? Is you sit with, yeah, imagine that. Um, you sit with someone and just show them compassion. You you just sit with them, you let them grieve, you hold the space for them. If they want water or something to eat, you go get them water and something to eat. There's nothing you can do at that point except let them know you are present with them. Heard that before. Like just sit sit with them. You don't have to say no. anything. No. Everybody worries about what do I say? You don't say anything. Just no, say, don't, don't say, say anything. anything. Just your presence ha- has an effect, right? Yeah. Or you can say, I mean, if, if you feel it, a lot of people are uncomfortable silence, if you really feel compelled to want to do something, say, how can I be there for you right now? What, mm. what can I do to be there for, to best be there for you right yeah. now? That's crazy. Yeah. I, I, you know, yeah. you, you know, you have to be a realist about it, right? I mean, some situations there is absolutely there's no reframing. There's no reframe. Right. There's no shifting focus. There's no. It's just no. You know, it's just and, and and trying to trying to do that, like would would incense. I would imagine would anger people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. Absolutely. So here's a perfect example. You know, someone we talked about grief earlier. Someone dies. Um, Saying like, well, at least they're in a better place. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. No. That that's a you pulled one from the old John <laughs> Kelly school of uh, uh, of Italian wakes. You know, hey, they're no longer suffering. Yes. Know? Oh, yeah. You and me both were Italian. Oh, I get it. Oh, jeez. No, not good. Yeah, my I I have this aunt, God love her. Um, but I, one of my cousins got married. You know, I don't know. Couple. It was it was one of the first weddings after my dad died. On, on my dad's side and they were you know big Italian family my dad was the oldest of 10 and so they had all you know they wanted a family picture of all my you know my dad's siblings yeah of course he was you know there were nine of them because he was oh wow there. and I just it just hit me and I just started bawling and I wasn't mm-hmm. like a loud like you know wailing type but I you just weren't bawling. throwing yourself on the cast no no okay you had no, you had my, some my decorum aunt, and this is a wedding right this is my cousin's oh. wedding oh all right yeah, it's my cousin's wedding yeah and so like they're taking a picture so my aunt comes over and she's like why are you you know what's what's going on uh, and she's bad. like well daddy's not here. you know my dad's not here yeah I called him I still call him daddy yeah that's I'm 40 and I said <laughs> and she's like well you know he he's he's in a better place he's not suffering anymore and I loved I love her but I wanted to punch her in that sure moment. sure like, 
It's All right, like, so so what is something we'd rather be here? Yeah, no <laughs> shit. Right. Like there's no there's no better place for my family than right here with me right now. Exactly. Having fun at my that's cousin's a, that's a amazing tough sell, wedding. right? Yeah. Any other anything other yeah. than that is a tough sell. So all right, so listen, hot shot. What do I <laughs> what do I so so give me some helpful, positive, like you know, do I if you can't say, if you don't know what to say, don't say anything at all. But is there mm-hmm. something that is, because I want to be, I want to be empathetic. I want to be supportive. I don't want to come off like a douche and say something that is hurtful, but I don't know what else to say. What, what, what could I say? What could I say that would make sense like that? In, in your scenario, mm-hmm. if your aunt came up to you, and it, what what would you have r- r- rather her say? That she said, yeah, um, it must be really hard for you. So empathy, it must be really hard for you to see all your aunts and uncles here and your dad not here. Ah, how about that? Or just a hug, just a ah. big hug. And I love her. I still love her. Like nothing's going to change. Of course, of course. Right? She, she meant very well. Of and, course. And, and, and most people but, do, right? Yeah, most people do. And that's the thing is, you know, I don't want to be like... That's so stupid. Why would, but it, people, a a lot of the reason there's stigma around mental health is because people don't know what to do with sadness. They don't know what to do with anger. They don't know what to do with despair, all these really difficult emotions. Um, And so they get nervous and uncomfortable and they just, a lot of times people are, they, they care about you. So they don't want to see you in pain. So, so they want to, um, decrease their own discomfort at seeing someone they care about in pain. So a lot of times they're saying something that is well-intentioned and meant to help the the suffering person, but in reality is only serving to calm themselves down. Hmm. If that makes, no, yeah, makes I keep saying if that sense. makes sense. I don't know if no, I'm articulating it makes perfect well. Sense. It makes yeah. perfect sense. Um, and so just acknowledging, how about that? Acknowledging just acknowledge it. Yeah. That this and, is- and empathy goes a long way. Just God, man, this fucking sucks. Like you just had yeah. a critical hey, incident this a, with this a kid. This has to be this a really, sucks. really tough time for you. And uh, yeah. And you know, how can I help? Huh. Yeah. Open-ended questions. So not, do you want, you know, do you want this? Can I do this? Cause that's, then you get a yes, no. Right. But it's, you don't want a yes, no. So you say, what can yeah. I do? Yeah. Uh, open-ended not, questions. Not can I, well, not, can I help you? Mm-hmm. No. What can mm-hmm. I do to help you? That's what not you a yes, right no now? response. Right. What What, what can do you I need do? right now? What do you need right now? Yeah. Yeah, that, that makes sense. How, how can I be present for you? How can I hold space for you? Which those are more like clinical ways of saying it, but basically, you know, hey man, how can I help you right now? Mm. And you know what? They would probably appreciate that, that you asking. And a lot of times, well, so here's the follow-up to that. A lot of times yeah. it's, I don't know, especially if, if the crisis has just happened, if the crisis is sure. still happening, I don't know. And that is a very valid response of, I don't know, because your thoughts are all over the place. Your sure. emotions are all over the place. And so that's when the person who's the helper says, "Is it would it be okay if I just sat here with you? Oh, home run right there. Home run. Because oh you know what I've seen? And I've done this. Sometimes... <sighs> when we get uncomfortable, we, we like to add our trauma to the situation. Oh my like, gosh. Yes. Like when you, when <laughs> yeah. you, when you say your dad, you know, Hey, my dad just, and you go, well, my dad, my dad died fucking, you know, my dad, my dad died too. Um, and, well, it's and, not so about it's like, you right now. It's right. Well, they, see, right people now. do that though. Don't they? Mm-hmm. Don't oh, they all do the that? time. They, they, and when it, therapists do it, uh, cause it's, it's a human thing to do again, just like trying to cope with discomfort. Right? It's just a thing humans do, but when therapists do it, I mean, we have to be really careful not to, it's, you know, called like self-disclosure. You have to be really careful not right. to do that because it's not about me. You, you are not paying me and, or your insurance company is not paying me to hear about me. Now I might talk about my dad in sessions sometimes, or my experiences with, you know, my, um, my ex who worked in law enforcement, who died from alcohol abuse. Um, you know, I might use those examples to say, um, I don't know 
what it's like for you. I can tell you went through something similar and here's what helped me. Yeah, you you use it as a method to connect and to provide a resource or tool. Right. It's not to right. It's not to fill an uncomfortable pause in the conversation or to give you some sort of um well I don't know what you're you know I don't know what you're all upset about. My dad's dead too. Right. Well and and that's and that's the another thing, you know, it's the whole perspective thing. Yeah. Yeah. Whole perspective. So, you know, if you and I are facing each other and I draw six, you know, to me, it looks like six to you, it looks like a nine, you know, how, or you have a, you know, one person is a lot taller than another person. They're standing in mud, the shit, you know, the mud, the shit's going to be a lot deeper for the shorter, right? It's all about perspective. I have Mm. two siblings. I'm the youngest of three. All three of us grew up with a six, a sick dad, but Mm. I took it the hardest of the three. I had the most. Uh, stress response to my dad being sick of the three even though we all lived in the same house and went through the same stuff right so your frame of reference you have to you know we often get tunnel vision right um especially after those critical during and after this critical incidents we get tunnel vision sure. we got to open it up a little bit and see it's not all about me hmm. i think that that's 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 a great uh some great little and i didn't i you know i'm not trying to have you put some free tips and and steps to have no but these are like conversations and situations that people completely geek on like they just like (laughs) and and what happens is because they don't know what to say they stay away right and people that's when people need the connection and your presence that's when they need the most and you staying away because you don't know what to say or how to be present that just that that prolongs the pain and suffering that that person is in um yeah so i appreciate you like giving us some um good examples and some things to do um when, when you start talking about i, I saw something on the website and i i it kind of really i had questions about it so for <laughs> your, your for your local clients you conduct something called walk and talk therapy I offer, yeah, I offer it. Um, can you can you so. talk to me about that, the concept behind that? Because yeah. I really found that like that sounds like something that's really I'd like to know more about. Yeah, so it's kind of a newer um, idea that's catching on among the therapist community. Um, it's been around for a while, but it's um, I think with COVID, you know, people kind of wanting to exercise more, get out more because of the cabin fever. Um, I think maybe it's become a little more um, a part of people's practices. So, um, what it is essentially is it's no different from any other kind of psychotherapy in terms of what you're discussing or the techniques therapists use to, to help people process what they're going through. Um, the only difference is literally instead of being on a a screen like we are right now, or, um, instead of being in an office across from each other, you go to a park, you go to a public place like a park and you walk around and do the session. Now, of course, there's waivers involved because, you know, we are not, th- psychotherapists are not, um, you know, we're not personal trainers, we're not doctors or anything like that. So, um, you know, it's not like a fitness program. Gotcha. But of yeah, but you're walking and talking. And what's helpful about that, especially with my population, which is, first responders and military connected individuals and their families. Um, A lot of the reason you got into this career is because you got to move your body, you're antsy. You don't want to sit at a desk like I do all day. (laughs) You don't, you don't, you know, you need to move your body. And so that's one reason I think, you know, I like to offer it, but also um, there is so much to the body mind brain connection so you've probably heard of emdr talking Mm -hmm. about post-traumatic stress yep um uh, so emdr works on this idea of bilateralism bilateral by meaning two and then lateral so if you've ever had emdr your practitioner might have um, had you do some sort of tapping or might have had you follow their finger or have these little kind of look like eggs that you put in your hand and it emits different um, like vibration frequencies and such. And that 
bilateral stimulation stimulation with your eyes or whatever um, you're using allows your brain to process differently. So if you have two limbs, you know, two legs, then as you're walking, you're getting that bilateral, you, you know, might not be able to see what I'm doing with my hands right now, if you're just listening, yeah. you have that bilateral stimulation. And so that helps your brain process all these really complex ideas and emotions that are deep in your mind. That makes perfect sense, Beth, because you know what I do sometimes when I have a decision to make, or I have a complex situation that I'm trying to come to some sort of some clarity on go for a walk yeah i i, I and, and 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 that you know it's not it's not i'm not doing a 5k i'm, I'm going for a walk yeah. and it's it, it's it somehow gets you right in the head it gets you out of it gets you into nature hopefully and it gets yeah. you into uh and allows maybe the mind to process things a little different no yeah, absolutely. And, it, and it, it's a lot of sensory, you mentioned nature, it's a lot of sensory, excuse me, excuse me, stimulation. So that is really important, especially when we're dealing with traumatic experiences. Um, I'm big on um, education about trauma and uh, just learning how the body, brain, mind all work together. And so when you're walking, at, whether it's outside or in a, on a track and gym, whatever, um, you're picking up, your senses are picking up everything happening around you. Um, you're more in this mind, it's a kind of mindfulness. You're more in the moment, stop and smell the roses, which can be very therapeutic for people who've had trauma because of that fight, flight, freeze right. component of it. Um, right. and it's, especially for my first responders, like if we're at a park, you know, if shit hits the van, you can just run and get it out. Right. Like I'm going to, go after you if I know what's happening um but but you have the space you're not cooped up in a little little hmm. office or anything huh. no that's I thought that that was really I mean and that's just one like modality that you I mean yeah all sorts yeah. of talk to me about some more of the uh the things that you offer at um thin line counseling services right don't forget the services services is important <laughs> Yeah. So, um, I also, I, are you wanting to know like what modalities I use? Or yeah. Like so, yeah. What? Some of the other things like, cause I know, I mean, I know you, you really drill down and specialize in helping the, the first responder military veteran community. Um, mm -hmm. and just, uh, that was one of the things that stuck in my mind that, that walk and talk, but there's other, there's other wide range of other techniques and modalities oh i see yeah 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 so one huge thing i i see frequently um and i saw when i was a relation in a relationship with someone who worked in law enforcement was sleep deprivation and difficulties mm. with sleep shift work um is killer um quickly can i can i impress you with work. my knowledge yes can I, can I impress you with my knowledge yes the Please world do. health organization has has identified and classified shift work as a probable carcinogen oh it's terrible <laughs> it is <laughs> fucking ridiculous it like is, oh yeah the it's horrible sleep is so fundamental to just on a cellular level let's, to your body let's let's, let's talk sleep because it's let's talk you, sleep. it is foundational it is fun and it's it's the one thing that we celebrate not getting doesn't even make I know sense. like it's a badge of honor it's like no you're not going to be saying that when you fuck up because oh, you God. because your mind is so fuzzy and you, you know you're not thinking clearly or when you start to have um issues with your organs your immune you know some auto autoimmune stuff showing up um you're, you're not going to be wearing it as a badge of honor when shit goes down I always thought it was so obviously when I, when I speak, I talk about the importance of sleep because we've neglected it for so long. Um, mm -hmm. Matthew Walker, why we sleep doctor. He's a neuroscientist. He um, wrote a book out. on it, wrote, wrote a book on it. And, and so I, um, I, I stole from him heavily when I present and it's easy to see the cycle 
when you when you look at the role that sleep or sleep deprivation plays in mental health it it mm -hmm. it, it, it becomes crystal clear it's like yeah you you have some trauma that's unresolved mm -hmm. so when you close your eyes at night that's you don't do that so you yeah. don't get adequate sleep well you now you're going on two days three days of you're supposed to get seven and nine. Maybe you're getting mm -hmm. four or five. And you know, and I know that sleep repairs the brain. Yeah. And it's like, no wonder why we have, we have this slippery slope because the, the yeah. one thing that can really start to help us repair, we can't get. Yeah. And, and these departments, all right. If there's any brass listening in, oh, there please, are. There are. please listen, this shift work stuff, you, you can't be doing this one month. You know, if you're on 12s, for example, this one month, you know, nights, one month days so that you got to give more time. I just left an agency. I presented at them uh, for them and they were I, I looked at him like a dog that hears a funny sound. I go, what? Mm -hmm. What's your schedule? We're, we're, mm -hmm. we're on uh, six to six, 12 hour shifts. And every other, every month you go from day shift to mids. Yeah. I go, you, I go, stop. Yeah. I go. So just, just about the time you start figuring out a sleep schedule, three weeks into it, that fourth week, you get you get the rug ripped out from exactly. underneath you. I go, yeah. who I go, who this is now this. Now listen, I go, who's great? I who's the, you know, F an idiot who who came up with this? His response, administrators. No, Beth, <laughs> we voted for it. No, 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 no. Oh, you're you're is, bullshitting uh, me right uh, now. Rank I mean, and file. You're throw bullshitting. the hand on the Bible. The rank and file voted for it because the way it works out is everybody ends up getting a piece of the weekend. Oh, yeah. So they don't give a shit about sleep. <sighs> they care that they have uh, that that the, 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 the schedule that you know. I don't. I don't want to be. I'm a young. I'm a new guy. I don't want to be on mids. Yeah. I want to be on days. And this this works perfectly. Where when I started, we worked eights. And you started on mids. And when you got seniority, you went to Charlie shift. And then when you've got more seniority, you went to day shift. There was a progression. And it wasn't great, but at least it allowed you to quasi acclimate yeah. to your shift, right? Um, but no, they voted for it. They voted for it because uh, because they, wanted, they didn't want to be on mids for the new guys didn't want to be on a midnight shift. They didn't want to earn, you know, I'd say earn their, earn, exactly. earn their stripes. Uh, so to speak, but they do that to themselves. Yeah. They vote, they vote for it every uh, twice a year. Well, and uh, here's the thing though. That's, that's all well and good. Um, but I, I gotta, I gotta say this delicately. <laughs> um, I think a lot of departments are setting, why would you want to set your people up to fail? So even, even if, okay, it's a democracy, we're voting to do it this way. If you as a leader know from talking to people like me or doctors or whoever that good sleep and consistent scheduling and sleep is really important for a person's mind, body, soul, why... I mean, are you pushing up against that? Should you be? Why are you maybe? letting the children make Why? the decisions for the oh, adults? Thank you for saying it. For, I was hoping you would say it for me. I didn't want to, oh, you know, these people God. don't know me. They it, know you. It makes you. perfect they don't sense. Know. Yeah. I didn't want to say it. Thank you for saying it no, for me. No, but especially knowing what we know. <laughs> I, I, I I, go, I, I, I said, I go, you got to be effing kidding me. Yeah. I go, yeah. This, this, is, this is so detrimental to your physical, mental, emotional health. Yeah. Um, but that's just the way it is. Because well, a client told me that recently my jaw dropped. I was like, wait, you mean to tell me just as you're getting used to being on nights, they are flipping you two days. And he was like, yep. And I'm like, and you're really irritable all the time. You're short with people. You're curt. You 
forget things and and people wonder why i mean it doesn't take someone with a master's degree or md no. to understand why this is happening yeah. the, the 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 importance of it is just it can't be overstated it can't be mm -hmm. overstated um and so what are some of the things that you do to help with addressing sleep yeah so so patients? that was actually i could have just answered this a while back when i was supposed to uh cbti which is cognitive behavioral therapy for insomnia so i do cbti um and so that involves it you know it's kind of homework intensive it's a little labor intensive but involves tracking your sleep tracking certain behaviors so for example if you're consuming caffeine if you're taking medication stuff like that so so yeah, it's, um, and then figuring out from there, from that data, I take the data, I look at it, excuse me. And I try to figure out with the client, like, okay, you know, you said earlier, 79 hours of sleep is what we need. True for the most part, but there are some people who only need six hours of sleep. Okay. And so with doing CBTI, we can determine, okay, this person really only needs six hours of sleep and their optimal hours of sleep are between such and such. You do a complete study on it. Yeah. And, and it's not a sleep study in the sense of like, I don't have, you know, I'm not a medical doctor, right? So I don't have like sensors, you know, I don't have any biometric stuff going on, but we are, you know, it's totally client driven. So the client is documenting how much sleep they're getting, you know, when they think they fell asleep, when they think, um, or like when they got in bed, when they think they fell asleep, how much caffeine did they consume? What hours did they consume alcohol, caffeine, medication, things like that. And you're obviously giving them all the the skill sets that they need to be successful when it comes to sleep with scheduling, mm -hmm. regularity, uh, light discipline and temperature and really trying to. Yeah. And sleep stack, hygiene, good sleep hygiene. Stack the odds in their favor. But that's where choice comes in. So we're talking about choice earlier. That is yeah. where choice comes in. You have to choose to do the homework. I cannot do the homework for you. Yeah. You a, have to do it. A lot of people decide and make the choice to, binge watch Netflix instead of going yeah. to bed. And then they wonder why they yeah. they're exhausted. Well, you know, yeah. it, it's a choice. You made a choice not to make your sleep. I mean, a look at Walter back here, right? Like Walter, oh, my buddy, yes. Walter back here, he yes. takes full advantage. Walter I'm talking about my cat. Has not easy. moved. <laughs> I'm talking about Walter, my Himalayan. Is, Walter is comatose <laughs> in the middle of the day. Good. Be is like Walter. Walter. Bambino? Yeah. Be is like Walter. Walter. Bambino? Nice. Be like Walter. Be like Bambino because he's my baby boy. There but... you go. Crash out on the chair. <laughs> nice. Oh my God. Hey, so listen. Um, talk to me about how do we like how do we you, you had said something to me that I thought was real interesting. You are in the not too distant future will be available to help people in all 50 states. Um, oh, so not all 50. We're hoping to get there. Okay. All right. Yes. I, I misspoke. I misspoke, but no, more, you're fine. More, more than more than Illinois right now. Missouri and Illinois. More 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 than the, the St. Louis area in Missouri. Yeah, we'll say, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. All right. And um well, it's called the it, counseling compact. And that's yeah. So each state has to introduce legislation okay. to okay. allow like interstate practice essentially. Okay. Um and we're not there yet. I think Minnesota, I believe, passed it today. Okay. We're not there. Yet. Missouri passed it a while back, so right. I'm good to go. But so once this, there's enough states now in the compact that they are creating the um, application for providers to fill yeah. out to be in the compact. And so still, once telehealth is amazing, yeah. right? It's amazing. I mean, of course you miss some things like I can't smell if somebody has alcohol in their breath. Right. Mm. So there's some things I miss because when I'm not in person with someone, but if I have somebody in a rural area who maybe had an injury at work or they have an, an illness of some sort, or they're in a rural area or they don't have reliable transportation, whatever that person otherwise wouldn't get care. You know, if 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 they could yeah, it, it, see it's me, limited, right? I'm, how therapist. are they going yeah, to get to you? Yeah, that's yeah, and perfect. so it, it's beautiful for things like that. And also, you know, there's some people who don't want to be seen walking into a psychotherapist, you know, a counselor's office. Yeah, I think. I mean, stigma. this 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 actually feels very normal. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, I've been doing it even before COVID. I was doing it, so oh, that's wonderful. 
Mm -hmm. So I'm used to it. But a lot of people I understand, you know, trust is so huge. Trust is like probably the number one thing. And and so I understand like if, if we're not in the same room, you may have difficulty trusting. So I always offer like, you know, um, put, uh, scan my camera around the room so you can see nobody but Walter is here, mm. you know, like, yeah. so yeah. Gotcha. Hey, if we want to get in touch with you, Beth, um, give me some deets there. How, how do we get, I, I, we got thin line counseling services. Is that a dot com? Uh, so it's www.tlc, which is like Tango Lima, uh, Tango Lima Charlie or Thin Line Counseling dash help, H E L P, Hotel Echo Lima Papa.com. Nice. So www.tlc dash help.com. My email is Beth, B E T H, at TLC dash help.com. I also have a Facebook business page, facebook.com slash Thinline Counseling Services. Um, and then I have an Instagram, which is at TLC underscore, because why be consistent? No, Help. it's all right. Listen, <laughs> at you TLC throw a wrench underscore. in the system somewhere, right? Well, yeah, and gonna... I would be offering groups. Oh, I'm yeah? going to offer groups in the near future, specifically for folks uh, who are newly retired or about to be retired, folks who have been injured or sick. Uh, injured on the job, sick, um, anger, relationships, all sorts of stuff. Uh, the compact, you know, it's not going to be open for applications um, to be licensed in all these different states until the end of the year. And then they, of course, have to approve me and stuff. But my belief is, my hope is by mid, you know, about this time next year, I can see people in the vast majority of the country. That'd be awesome. And, and I will put all that information in the show notes just so mm-hmm. it'll be easy for people to, uh, to uh, have access to um, some okay. parting words before we, uh, we roll off into the sunset. Yeah. What do you think kid? What, some words for the listener that maybe, um, maybe they're, they've been thinking about it. You know, uh, people have told them that they should talk to somebody. Uh, mm-hmm. What would you say to them? Just make the appointment. Hmm. Um, if you make the appoint the appointment, you're more likely to go. And the worst that can happen if you go is maybe you're out 25, 30 bucks for a copay and you don't like the therapist. Hmm. It's not a good fit. And you try again. Try that's the worst. New. That's the worst case scenario. Worst case scenario, you don't like them. And, and we are obligated by our ethical licensing code, ethical code and licensing board. We have to refer you. So if you decide, you know, Beth makes, she likes cats and I don't like people who like cats, then let me know, hey, I can't work with you because you have a cat. Can you help me find someone new? Sure. And I have to find you, have to offer you um, uh referral sources so the worst second and and absolutely find someone who is the buzzword culturally competent um because i've taken a lot of extra training yes but i've also lived the life of a first responder and veteran significant other yeah so don't just pick anybody and i know it's a little extra work and we are kind of few and far between out there um but do the work. And if you want help to know how to do that, shoot me an email. I will help you free of charge. Ladies and gentlemen, Beth Salmo, you've been awesome. Thanks so much for your time today, Beth. It was really nice catching up. And um, it's great that there's folks like you out there to help our men and women who are, you know, who are in a place that they, they rather not be. But with help from people like you, they can they can uh, get through that and and be in a place of uh, of peace and and and, and thriving. So thanks well, for your time. It's an honor today. and a pleasure. Yeah, thank you so much. It's an honor and a pleasure. And um, yeah, thanks for all you do as well. Oh, my pleasure. And that is that, kid. 